Deo, Deo. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Deo, Deo. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Work all night on a drink of rum. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Stack banana till the morning come. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Stack banana till the morning come. Daylight come and me wanna go home. Well, that was probably a better song for banana bread. And today we're not making banana bread. We're going to make nutmeg bread. But when I think nutmeg, I think of the Caribbean. So there we go. Or Caribbean, depending on where you're from in the world and how you pronounce it. So today we're making a fairly simple and simple uh, recipe of nutmeg and rum bread. And the first thing you're going to want, to want is two cups of flour. I didn't get my whisk out here, which is hiding on me, I see. Oh, where's my whisk? Yeah, there's a little one, that'll work. And then we want three teaspoons of nutmeg, hence being nutmeg bread. One teaspoon of baking soda. That's the pucker powder, baking soda. And that's it for this part, for the dry ingredients. That is kind of a small whisk. Oh, here's my big whisk. I was ahead of myself and did have that after all. So we just want to blend our dry ingredients together. Get them well mixed. Now, one of my viewers has asked me if I could do some Scottish and Swedish Christmas goodies. And so I will be doing that, but uh, I'll wait a little bit closer to Christmas. I won't be doing too many of them because I try to stay away from really complex recipes for the show just because it would take quite a while and I, I'm trying to do recipes that are easy and simple to follow. So one of the recipes I will be doing is uh, came down from my grandmother and it's a Scottish shortbread recipe and my family quite like it so we'll, uh, we'll be making that and it's a Scottish shortbread is actually fairly simple to make. There's not many ingredients in it. I guess there's hard to, it was hard to come by ingredients up in the highlands, huh? So, <laughs> there we go. All right, once you have your dry ingredients blended together, you can set them aside. And now you want a bigger bowl, and into the bigger bowl you are going to put... I didn't get it out of the microwave. half of a cup of melted butter. That's half a cup of melted butter. Or margarine if you prefer, but I like, I like butter. I like the real thing. Don't want to put all those uh, Holsteins and Guernseys and Jerseys out of work. So. But I don't want to put the canola farmers out of work either, so there you go. <laughs> what do you do? Huh? Can't please everybody. But you can use margarine for this recipe if you prefer. But I, I don't think you can beat the taste of real butter. So you want a half a cup of butter, one cup of sugar. So it's a fairly sweet. But if you don't have that with the, the nutmeg and the baking soda, it's going to make you pucker up real good. And one egg lightly beaten. So today's not a good day to take out your aggressions on your eggs because you don't want to beat the heck out of them. You just want them lightly beaten. I don't know if that counts as domestic violence or not, beating an egg. I don't know. It gets kind of cruel in the kitchen, doesn't it? You beat eggs and you whip cream. Anyway. And then we want to blend that all together really well. Now an alternative to this recipe, is just a minor alternative, same ingredients, but instead of uh, melting your butter, you just use very soft butter and you can in a mixed master, 
you can whip the uh, butter and eggs together, or eggs, butter and um, sugar together. I just find this much easier to, to use a melted, melted version since I uh, tend to not use my mix master very often. Okay, once you've got those all mixed together really well, you're going to add one teaspoon, whoop, if I can get it to open, Griefenheimens. There we go. Oh, it's a new bottle, looks like. So if it's a new bottle, make sure you take off the inner seal or you'll be there all day trying to get the rum extract out of the bottle. There we are. So one teaspoon of rum extract. Here we go. Work all night on a drink of rum. There we are. I don't know if I could work all night on a drink of rum, it'd probably put me to sleep. But different cultures, different strokes, I guess. Huh? Alrighty, now we've got that all blended. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our dry ingredients, and you also want one cup of sour milk. Now, if you don't have any sour milk, the easiest way to do that is simply to Take a cup of milk and put in a teaspoon of lemon juice or a teaspoon of vinegar and mix it well and voila, you'll have sour milk. So we're going to alternate putting in a little bit of the, uh, I shouldn't say a little bit, I'll put in probably a half a cup here and mix it in. The flour and you want to blend that in. Now see, if I was a big studio chef, I'd have a camera up here above my head so you could look right down into the bowl. But I'm not a big studio chef. I'm tall, but I'm not big. That's the fun thing with the English language, isn't it? It depends where you, where you place the words in the sentence as to what you're uh, referring to. We've had a couple of billboards here around Virginia that I got chuckles out of. One was, it said, huge baby, huge baby clothing sale. And I thought, wow, I didn't know too many people who have huge babies, but Hope the sale goes well. I think what they meant was a huge sale on baby's clothing. And the other one was the Yamaha piano store here in town who were having a giant piano sale. And I, only by the grace of my wife talking me out of it, did I not go into the store to ask and see the giant piano. But again, I think they meant the sale was giant, not the piano. And then the one that's actually not too far from here is the big capital GMC dealership has a sign out saying they're having a gigantic truck sale. So if anybody's in the market for a gigantic truck, just come to Regina and go to capital GM's Chevy and uh, you can buy your gigantic truck from them. Alrighty. I know, I'm being, I'm being fussy, aren't I? And now we'll add a little bit of the sour milk, maybe about half. And we're going to mix that in. This takes a little bit more work to blend that in. Part of the reason being that you have the, uh, the butter in there, which is an, basically essentially an oil. And so then trying to get your milk to blend in, you're going to go from having a real nice batter to suddenly having a rather runny batter. But that's the nature of the beast. So I get that worked in really, really well. And we'll add some more of the dry ingredients. There we go. I usually do it in about fours. So about a, a quarter of the dry ingredients each time until I get it blended in. And if you're doing it in a mix master, you'll want to do it more slowly than that because otherwise you'll get that big puff of flour into your kitchen. It'll make your kitchen smell wonderful with the nutmeg in it, but. Uh, then you gotta dust your kitchen, and that's that's not always so much fun. It's amazing the places dust can get, the nooks and crannies it finds. And places you didn't even know existed in your kitchen until you give it a thorough clean. So blend that in really well. Make sure you get the stuff down off the sides. There we go. Yeah, a little more of the dry, and a little more of the milk. I'll 
out the remainder of the milk. We're having company over tomorrow. And so Lori, if you're watching, guess what you're gonna have with your coffee tomorrow? Nutmeg bread, unless you don't like nutmeg bread, in which case I won't make you eat it. I don't think Glennis would force you to do that either, but uh, that's what's on the menu for tomorrow when you come for coffee. Other than Lori, I don't know if I have any viewers in Regina. I guess my granddaughter, but she, is, she lives in Edenwold, so. But if you are a regular viewer of my program and live in Regina, please uh, drop me an email at y underscore gath underscore 62 at yahoo.com. I'd love to meet, love to meet you. And if you don't live in Regina, but happen to be in Regina for in the future, in some time in the future for any particular reason, drop me a line and I'd be happy to get together with you for coffee or, or something. Especially if you're one of my English fans and you definitely better give me a, a hauler. I'd be pretty upset if I found you were over here from England and didn't bother to let me know. That goes especially for you, Gareth, if you're over here from England at any time. I need to see you so I can teach you how to make cornbread. I dearly love Gareth. He's a very skillful fellow. does magnet fishing and metal detecting and all kinds of other things. But for some reason, he claims that for the life of him, he can't cook or bake. So I keep threatening to go over to England and teach him. If he comes over here, then I can do it here in my own kitchen. It's always nicer to cook in your own kitchen, isn't it? <laughs> you know, usually, anyway, you know where everything is. And, uh, all right, that's that's it, folks. Move our rum out of the way. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 350, which I've already done, and grease and coat with flour a loaf pan. And now we're going to put the batter into the loaf pan. As you can see, it flows rather easily. Another treat I'll make uh, closer to Christmas. I have to wait for it to come out in the stores, but uh, really nice tasting loaf you can make for around the Christmas time or the winter time is uh, eggnog bread. I, I'm an eggnog fanatic, so. My, my three favorite foods in life are potato salad and uh, Oh, I shouldn't say three favorite foods. My two favorite foods are eggnog. Oh, geez, I'm getting all mixed up here. Our potato salad and ice cream. And my favorite drink is eggnog. So there you go. I guess that's why I like Christmas so much, because uh, eggnog and ice cream, I kind of think of Christmas. I know I'm weird. Most people think of Christmas or of uh, ice cream for the summer, don't they? But I like it in the winter. And get most of that batter out of there. Waste not, want not. There we go. We've got it in the pan. Mm -mm. And shake it to get a level. And it's ready to go in the oven. So 350 oven. And we're going to bake it for an hour. So in she goes. I'll set the timer for an hour. And we'll come back when it's done and turf it out onto a rack and see how she looks. So, you've got time to go and read War and Peace. Well, maybe not that. Maybe A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But hopefully today it's just the best of times and we'll have a lovely, lovely nutmeg bread in a few, in, oh, a few minutes, in an hour. And uh, we'll see how it looks. All right. Go take a nap. Go for a walk. Read War and Peace. Or a tale of two cities and we'll see you when the bread's ready. Well all right our hour is almost up and we can bring our loaf out of the oven so let's just check it first and see if it's ready. So we'll insert our probe and it comes out clean so the loaf is ready to come out of the oven. Let's 
still a minute left on the timer, but that's okay. We'll just turn that off, turn off the oven. Bring out our loaf. And there we have a lovely looking loaf. Let's hold it up real close there. All right, now let's see if we can take it out of the pan without having any problems. There. See if you grease and flour your pan properly, your loaf should come out without any issues. If you have a pan that for some reason sticks, usually they stick in the bottom, what you can do is put a strip of parchment paper in the pan, make it come up over the ends at each end, and then usually when you take your pan out of the oven, you can just slide a, a, a dinner knife along the sides and lift the loaf right out using the parchment paper. But there we have a lovely, lovely nutmeg bread ready to serve your guest, Lori. It's ready to serve you tomorrow when you come for coffee. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and the video. Uh, if you have and want to see more, Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future uh, uploads, and leave a comment. And if you've tried any of my recipes and have any comments about them, I would appreciate hearing. Uh, if you want to know something that might make the recipe a little better, or if you found something that you didn't like about it, uh, always good to know. So until Friday when we do our weekly shout outs and groaner of the week, take care, God bless. Stay safe. See you later, my friend.